arrived to Don Quixote in Honolulu, and this place is kind of like a dollar store on steroids. <gasps> so excited, I was not sure if this would be the same Don Quixote as they have in Japan, and it looks to be, you know, like a Hawaiian take on it. Oh my gosh. Eyelash curlers, nail clippers, oh. Yes, I'm getting me some new nail clip, oh, zip poppers. Oh, I had no idea. Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to share with you my Don Quixote haul, and I'm going to be tasting some of the things I got there. Now, I was really unprepared when I went to Don Quixote. We actually went there because my husband was interested in finding some books, so we looked for a book off location, which happened to be inside the Don Quixote book off. And they have used books. They used to also have a place in Japan near right where I live called Hard Off, which is a great name. And oh my gosh, was it so much fun. I could have spent hours there. So a little background behind Don Quixote. It is a chain that's located in Japan and it is open 24 hours, seven days a week. And when I lived there, I never actually got an opportunity to go to one. They are all over Japan, but I lived in a relatively small kind of suburby rural location in Japan and they did not have any Don Quixotes there. Of course, if you go to Tokyo, you can find them. And actually my last trip to Japan, I had intentions of going, but it just never happened. So this was my first trip to Don Quixote, completely serendipitous, and it was absolutely amazing. Just the food court section alone and the grocery aisles were just incredible. So there's a whole seafood section. <gasps> Banchan section. <gasps> this actually reminds me of going down to basement food courts down in shopping centers in Japan. Oh my gosh, looks so good. Look, oh, look at the mochis. Taro mochi, chichi mochi, somen. Oh my, zaruzoba. Onigiri section. Except they call musubi here. So the Don Quixote that we went to was located in Honolulu on Oahu and we were actually leaving that day to go home so I didn't have enough time to do an entire video. But I did buy a few things and I want to share them with you. Here's my Don Quixote bag. This is the reusable Don Quixote bag. I believe I paid 10 cents for this. So when I first walked into the store, I found the makeup section. And I am not a big makeup skincare person, although I have been really happy with the Japanese products that I found while I was living there. Particularly with the facial care stuff, it tends to be pretty affordably priced and it doesn't react with my skin. My skin's pretty sensitive. I find when I try products, even when they're labeled sensitive, they don't really work for me. I break out, I get weird rashes. So I keep my skincare routine very, very minimal. In fact, I just use water at night. So I did pick up these two things and these are made by Sana and one is a skincare lotion even though it's really watery and one is a kind of facial wash it's kind of like a toner but like makeup remover clean cleanser i'm going to be testing these separately and probably in different weeks because i've found when i try multiple products at one time i don't know which one is giving me the reaction and sunscreens i have a really hard time with because they make my skin itch so Welcome to the world of Emmy skincare. So I'm excited to try these products out. I've had good luck with over-the-counter Japanese skincare products in the past. So looking forward to that. So in the same skincare section, I found this. And I'm super excited about this. This went crazy here on YouTube a couple years ago in the beauty guru genre. And this is a charcoal mask, but it's peelable. So you apply it and then you peel it off. So I think I'm actually gonna apply that. I'm just gonna do one product for today and then I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna peel it off. It's gonna be a little bit distracting because I will be tasting some things, but I feel like it's the best use of my time in front of the camera. What I love about this is because it sticks to your skin so well, when you peel it, it pulls out all the hairs and blackheads 
and because this mask is black, you get to examine all the things that you pull out. Oh, I love that. You know, those little Biore strips that, that you should just go over your nose and you just peel it off. I'd be like, yes, look at all the little tiny trees. Yes, this is the same thing, but it's gonna be your entire face. And I've seen some reviews of these. People say it could be a bit painful because it does pull out all of the hairs. Isn't that lovely? So in that same beauty care section, I also got another peeling product and it is this, and this is a foot peel. I bought one of these a couple years ago at a Japanese supermarket in California. Super excited to use it, but then it took me like a year to use it and I was stoked and I tried it and nothing really happened. No peeling action. So I think that the product was expired at that point. So basically what you do is you soak your feet into these little footy bags they include, and there's an enzyme that breaks down all the dead skin. And then in about three or four days, your skin begins to peel off your feet, like in sheets, supposedly. I have yet to have that kind of experience, but I'm excited too because I love that kind of stuff, that peeling stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. And then you're supposed to be left with baby soft feet. This packet contains two sets, so I'll be able to do this twice. Nice, this was $17. So I have to look at my receipt. I believe this face mask was eight or $12. And then in that same section, I found these. These are Kai nail clippers. You're like, fine, white clippers, big deal. It is a big deal. Let me show you why. These came in different colors. There's pink and blue and different sizes. I got the large size. And what's special about these clippers is that they catch your nail clippings. <gasps> so you're not like having nail clippings like fly all over the place. It's just, it's just a brilliant, brilliant idea. You just open them like ordinary nail clippers. There's a little file here. So pardon my nails, my dry skin, my scratches. I was in my chicken coop. This is reality, people. I don't do manicures. I don't even really do polish, so. Yes, keep those comments kind, okay? Some people have asked me about this little dark line that's on my nails. They're concerned that I have some kind of skin cancer. I don't, I've had this line for years and years and years. It darkened a bit when I got pregnant with my first son and it's just remained. I have one on my toenail. I have another one slightly on my other thumbnail. It's just a little bit of pigmentation. So no need to worry. Let's see how it does on a big thumbnail. Did you hear that? That was a very satisfying clip these are wicked sharp many nail clippers actually include a nail file but oftentimes it has those kind of like ridges and it's not really that effective but this one's working really nicely oh very satisfying crunch and all the clippings are actually going inside the nail clipper they're not flying everywhere. I don't have to do this over a waste basket. It's just collecting all of them. You know, it's the little things in life. This was $6, I believe, and the smaller ones were about five. So definitely worth it. Love the Kai nail clippers with the built-in clipper collector. Brilliant. I'm gonna go ahead and do this mask because this takes some time to dry. So I'm gonna put my hair back and tie it back. I've got a mirror here so you can see. And then I'm also going to clip my bangs back a little bit. Oh, isn't that lovely? Lovely. So here's the peeling mask. So I just washed my face. I got rid of all the moisturizer and the little bit of foundation I had on my face so that the face mask will stick. It smells really good. It has that lemon fresh joy smell that I love of wet naps. It smells great. Okay, let's put some on our hands. Whoa, it is super thick and black. Look at that. All right, here we go. Oh, that was bad. It's really gummy. Okay, I'll put it on one cheek at a time. It's already drying. It's very sticky, kind of latexy. I'm gonna put it on my right finger. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So you kind of have to work quickly because it's already drying. I really want my nose to get done, so I'm try not to get my hair in there. Too late. It's actually very hard to spread because it's kind of so sticky. Like that's really thin. Now I'm going to try to miss the eyebrows as well because it's going to pull it out. So put on one thin coat 
and then put on another. So I'm back, I went into the bathroom and got really close to the mirror and added another coat or a layer of the face mask to make sure that I got a nice even coat. It feels great, it's kind of cool and mentholated. I can feel it starting to tighten a bit. It is kind of tricky to apply because it's so thick and kind of sticky and it is really difficult to wash off your hands, but I've got it on, it smells great, and yeah, let's go ahead and taste some things. I know this is gonna be a little bit distracting because I've got this on my face, but you know, we'll work around it. So when I went down the kitchen kind of appliance gadgety section, I found these two things. Look at this. This is a meat slicer, a giant meat slicer. If you've ever seen a hard boiled egg slicer, this is the same concept, except it is probably twice or three times the size. This is for making spam musubis. If you haven't seen spam musubis or if you don't know what they are, I have a video. I will put the link up above and down below. So I recently received a box from the spam museum. They sent me all the flavors of spam, 16 flavors of spam. And I'm going to be using this gadget in that video. <laughs> Isn't that great? So it has these wire strings, look. You place your block of spam here and you drop this down and the wires cut the spam into slices, very similar to how you would cut clay. Can't wait to draw that out. In my video, I showed you how to use the can of spam as your musubi mold, but this is an actual mold that's made out of plastic. Just two parts, a mold for your rice and a little plunger. Looking forward to testing that as well. So look for that video soon. Oh, I can feel it tightening. I also picked up this Marlin fish jerky, onion pepper flavor. This is quite expensive. This was $8. And this is Aloha from Kona, Hawaii. This is Marlin fishing capital of the world. It smells like fish sauce, pretty thinly sliced and very tender. All right, let's give that a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. It's a lot sweeter than I expected but absolutely delicious. It's surprisingly a lot like beef jerky. It's pretty resilient and kind of tough and dried, a little bit more thinly sliced than say typical beef jerky, but the texture is very similar, very kind of sinuous, but the flavor is delicious. Definitely of the sea, it's not fishy or stinky, but nice and sweet. Mm-hmm, mm, that was a really good piece. Nice and peppery, taste a bit of onion in there, not at all smoky. I think that's what's really different about this. I think a lot of times when you have, especially store-bought beef jerky, they add that kind of liquid smoke flavor, so it's kind of artificially smoky. This is not at all, but mostly what I taste is that kind of sweet, almost teriyaki flavor. Mm. The next item I found is this, and this is a bit of a touristy kind of gag gift, and these are donkey balls. <laughs> Can't pass up something called donkey balls. There are several different flavors, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and some other flavored ones. I think they're even blue donkey balls, but I decided to go with the classic. So these are chocolate covered macadamia nuts, and macadamias are grown in Hawaii, and they are actually not native. They're actually native of Australia. They were imported, and they grow really well in Hawaii. Once upon a time, Kona Nightingale carried the freshly harvested mac nuts from the fertile volcanic hills. An uncracked Hawaiian mac nut looks much like a ball. Men processing the mac nuts would laugh and say, here come the donkey balls. And so began a tale of two balls. <laughs> it's true. If you see a macadamia nut tree, you see the actual shell of the macadamia nut. It does look like a perfect little ball. Oh, they smell great. Nice and chocolatey. Look at that. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> five donkey balls in here. We should always have an even number, I feel. Otherwise, you don't have a pair of balls, right? You gotta have a pair. Oh. Mmm, got just chocolate on that. Kind of a waxy dark chocolate. To be honest, not the best of quality. And I still haven't gotten the nut, but very generous amount of chocolate, that's for sure. I haven't even got to the center yet. Kind of difficult to eat, because they're so large. Yeah, I got that joke. Did you get that joke? I got it. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. So I'm gonna eat the rest of this so I can get the crunch of the macadamia nut. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> not really hard. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like the proportion of chocolate 
to macadamia nut was a little bit unbalanced, way more chocolate than nut. So while you do feel the texture of the nut while you're crunching it, you don't really taste it. It's kind of just overpowered by the amount of chocolate in there. And I also feel like the quality of the chocolate could be a little bit better, but that classic combination of chocolate and nut, delicious. I also, at Don Quixote, picked up these, and these are a pair of little okonomiyaki spatulas. Now, if you haven't seen me use my zojirushi griddle, so many of you said, Emily, why are you using metal utensils on this nonstick grill top? Well, yeah, I cringe too, but, but here's the caveat. The Zoji Rushi beautiful nonstick grill top came with a metal spatula. It came with one. So they're giving you the green light to use it on the surface. I know, cringeworthy, I know. So that's why I bought these. So these are specifically made for flipping okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki is this beautiful kind of cabbage pancake that has all these different toppings on it served in Japan. But because these are nice and wide and the handles are nice and short, I'm imagining it's going to make a nice flipping experience but again i won't know till i test this out but excited about that and then i don't have to read more like oh Emily, what are you doing i'm prepared now uh. excuse me i also picked up a bag of maui style shrimp chips i saw these everywhere i love shrimp chips but i've never had this brand before so i packed these in a box and they got a little bit squashed oh yeah they smell great and they look oh yes I actually remember the few times that my mom made deep fried shrimp chips. You can buy these unfried chips and then you put them in the deep fat fryer and they puff up and turn just magical. These were just magical. These look just like those ones that my mom made, except hers were kind of pink and orange in color. These are white. These look a little bit thicker. <laughs> mm, so good. It's hard to open my mouth because I've got this mask on, but these are scrum diddly umptious. Did you hear that crunch? Mmm. So good. These are fresh. They don't taste rancid at all. They have a great kind of shrimpy flavor. Tons of that sweet and salty umami flavor and delightful kind of light and airy, slightly styrofoamy crunch. These are definitely fluffier than the shrimp chimps that my mom deep fried when I was a kid. And I love that. If you go to Hawaii, get yourself a bag of these. Delicious. I'm gonna save some for my boys because they're gonna love those. These are definitely Japanese inspired. These are a Japanese snack. Sometimes they're called arare and they're made of different little rice snacks. Now you can find these all over Hawaii. You can find them in every single convenience store. They have a whole section on these kinds of rice snacks and li hing flavored snacks. Now li hing is a Chinese kind of seasoning. It's sweet and tangy and it's placed on all kinds of dried snacks and seeds. These little senbei snacks here, they're made out of rice. So if you are gluten intolerant, this is a great snack for you and they have a great crunch. Listen. Mm -hmm. And they're coated in a great little soy saucy kind of sweet and salty seasoning on the outside. Sometimes they're a little bit spicy. Sometimes they're seasoned with a little bit of wasabi, but each one of these shapes have a slightly different texture and different flavor. Delectable, delightful, addictive snack. Mm. Next, let's try these. And these are two packs of traditional Japanese candies. So the Japanese came to Hawaii as laborers to work in the cane fields. And with them, they brought their food and their culture, including traditional candies. Now, kompeto, I've eaten in one of my old, old Japanese tasting videos back when I was living in Japan. And it's a beautiful, very cheery kind of candy. They're so perfect. Oh, they're so beautiful. They look like stained glass. All right, here we go. And they're delicious. A little hard candy with a kind of slightly cherry to fruity flavor to them. In my past experience, Competo are not flavored. So let's give these a taste and see if they have any flavor to them at all. Nope, they don't have any flavor. Just tastes like sugar. Sweet and hard, no flavor whatsoever. Just really, really, really adorable. Alrighty, so I am back and the face peel is dry now. I can totally touch it. And it is kind of difficult to 
talk because, or make any facial expressions for that matter because my face is glued with this mask. I think most people try to peel it from the top. So I'm gonna try doing that. It sounds great, do you hear that? It doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt too bad at all. Although I've got some of my bangs stuck into it. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, oh yeah. Oh, right here hurts. Got lots of little hairs there. Oh, right here. Smarts too. Ow, ow. Ooh, yeah, right there. Ooh, yeah. Now that I'm peeling it off my face, it smells a little bit like Elmer's glue. Oh. Oh, yeah. That hurts. Great sounds, though. Oh, that feels watchy. Whew. This cheek stuff is really making my eyes water. Right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, sideburns. Sideburns. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, oh, I guess that part wasn't completely dry yet. Oh, but it's coming off in one sheet. I'm so excited. Gosh, that is pretty gross. My face feels super smooth. I hope I don't have an allergic reaction to this. I will update this if I do, but I do have some little bits here which I'll clean up, but my skin feels very very smooth because it's denuded. There's no <laughs> little baby hairs whatsoever. I think this part right here was the most painful. I think like the peachy fuzz that like lives here, but my face feels so smooth. Does it look beautiful with all the little black pieces on there? I'm sure it doesn't. Alrighty, so there you have it, my little Don Quixote haul. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learn something. I will put all the information to the products I showed in this video and the location of the Don Quixote itself in the description box down below. Be sure to check out my other Hawaii videos that I did, other taste tests. Look for more Hawaii themed videos coming up soon. I've got lots of vlog footage that I'm gonna combine with recipes so you too can have a little bit of Hawaii in your home as well. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Tulu, take care. Bye! <laughs>